Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Spilling the Crime. With me, Humberto. Melo. And me, Jonas Grancha. You don't need to know. It's Humberto. Just Humberto. But it's in the cover. They don't know of another every Humberto. Episode. They don't know another Humberto. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, here we are doing another episode, this time about a crime that I believe a lot of you know about. We are talking about Night Stalker. So this is on Netflix and everywhere. So yeah, about Richard Ramirez. If you hear th uh, these kind of weird sounds, it's because he's eating chips again. It's his favorite <sighs> snack. Um, I'm eating chips and drinking wine. So, so guys, raise your glass, guys. And if you're driving, please don't raise your glass. If you have water, drink water. Water is important. But here we go to a brand new episode. Before we begin, guys, if you are liking our job, please subscribe, follow, rate, everything, in everywhere. <laughs> Do you mind jumping in? I'm sorry. Are you here? <laughs> I'm alone. Some boogers on, of my nose just came out of oh, to my mouth. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. This is the worst okay. call to action ever. Okay, let's put, yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, guys, don't forget, if you want to share a story with us, don't forget to send us an email to spillingthecrime at gmail.com with your story. And maybe you have a crime that you want us to talk about, give us suggestions and tell us a story about something creepy that you went through. They can check our Instagram account. Yeah, you can check our Instagram. Don't forget to rate us five stars on iTunes and give us an awesome, great, amazing review. No, 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 let's if not, do this. If not, we will delete the comments. <laughs> I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> so, what are we talking about? Tonight we are talking about the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. The sadistic killer that terrorized Los Angeles. On August the 31st, 1985, Detectives across California had finally discovered the identity of a serial killer who the media had dubbed the Night Stalker. The mysterious attacker was wanted for 13 murders across Los Angeles. He was a psychotic, paranoid, Satan-worshipping psychopath who derived his pleasure from the combination of lust and violence. After being chased by a mob of vigilantes, 25-year-old Richard Ramirez had to be rescued by two police officers who had inadvertently made the biggest arrest of the decade. This one cop looks real close. He's, Jesus, it's the Night Stalker. It's Richard Ramirez. I will jump up by starting to say that Ramirez reminds me of a restaurant here in Lisbon that it's called the Ramiro and it's very... Um, What's the food? Then? Pricey. It's seafood. Ramiro's seafood? So the name of the killer reminds me of seafood. Okay, all right. I mean, sure. Today we are talking about Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker. He's well known for 13 murders uh, in LA. He has more, but we will talk about that. And all of these crimes in LA were during tw uh, 14 months of... All of, <laughs> <laughs> All of these crimes happen in a 14-month period. So let's start at the beginning. When was Ramirez born? Can you talk about the beginning of his uh, era? Yes, I think I can. So Ramirez was born in El Paso. <laughs> so he was born in El Paso. Um, in nine... 1960. Yeah. 1960. We are Portuguese. <laughs> this is not our first language. Please bear with us. Come on. <laughs> and we already drank one bottle of wine and we are yeah. on health of another. Yeah. He so, was the youngest of five, five children. children. And they live in a really polluted area. So a lot of the children uh, that were born there 
were born with uh, birth defects. I don't think that's the cause of what he he done, to be honest. But he started smoking marijuana at nine years old. And sniffing glue. Sniffing glue. Did you ever sniff glue or, mm, or like no. put glue on your mouth? No, but I did some balls. I did lick the, 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 um, the baton. Uh, glue. Baton. It was good? No, was it good? I don't remember. <laughs> I was like a child. I used to eat uh, uh, filter. I don't know how to say it in Portuguese. Felter knight. Uh, felter pens. <laughs> Sorry. Felter Knights. Let's Felter Knights. He used to live with his parents. I think his father was uh, really abusive to him. So after a while, he decided to live with Mike, his cousin, right? He was a Vietnam vet and he was a really damaged soul. Oh, Mike. Mike was like the teacher of it all. Yeah, he was a, a big inspiration to uh, Ramirez. The mind of Ramirez. He, he used to tell all the stories, the dreadful things and stories that he did to women in Vietnam. He told all his stories to Ramirez, like hurt others, made him feel powerful. This is, this is messy to someone who is nine years old or 12 years old. So he starts spending an awful lot of time with Mike. He's, he's quite a, a significant influence on young Richard's life and he's very impressionable at this age. So, so this really is kind of cementing some of those ideas that he's had about harming other people. This is the place where Ramirez starts looking at women like they were objects. objects. So basically Mike had a gun on the fridge. Like he likes it cold, by the way. <laughs> he likes a gun really cold. This garbage man. By the way, Mike has a, had a girlfriend, which I don't understand these women at the time, but they had an argument uh, with his wife and he shoots her in the face while Ramirez was seeing all of this. Why would you date a guy that has a gun in the fridge? What the fuck? I'm so in love with you. Yeah, when you, <laughs> you know what this, this uh, taught me like when you have an argument and you are losing the argument you shoot people noted in the face in the face like so they won't they won't wake up no, this is so stupid this this inspiration to Ramirez was I think this is the origin story and this is where all could be gone and Ramirez was watching yeah so this was the first crime scene that he watched the reaction that he had he had no feeling no he the describes uh, everything like uh, not caring about the, the feelings of the victim or that someone died. Talks about the blood uh, yeah. uh, bursting out of the wound and everything. Like without, it was something normal. No like, I'm going to the grocery shop. I he mean, was 12 years old. How can he be so cold? Yeah, but because of this, uh, Mike was arrested. Thank God. But he was released in 77. So are you alive, Mike? I hope not. So sorry. Not sorry. Ramirez goes uh, live to... <laughs> this is going to be the worst episode ever. To edit? Yes. To edit it will be. Yes. <laughs> After this, he had to go to live with his sister and husband. He doesn't look out for himself. By the way, this is where he starts to be super smelly and doesn't take a shower. He doesn't care about life, but he contemplates a lot about what his cousin told him and what he wants to do in the future, which is really scary. Age 17, Ramirez was ready to turn his twisted fantasies into reality. So at 17 years old, Richard Ramirez starts working at Holiday Inn. Yeah. Remember, this is the guy who watched uh, his cousin killed um, someone. He's still in school and... Yeah, you know what he had access to? He had the fucking Every pass room. key to all the freaking rooms. What the hell? One day, a husband of someone went somewhere or he was just parking something. Something? A car? <laughs> and he left his... <laughs> He's parking something. <laughs> and left his wife in the room. And Ramirez tries to rape his wife. What a brilliant idea, Ramirez. What the fuck? What a quickie thing you would do. 
<laughs> yeah, but thank God the husband comes in and kicks his ass. The couple ends up not pressing charge against um, Ramirez because they were leaving town and they didn't bother, bother to... Yeah, um, nothing happened. So I think that was also a reason that nothing more happened. If Ramirez went through all of to the end, I think something would happen, but I think... Yes, I think they, 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 maybe they caught him soon, so uh, they yeah. didn't bother. And by the way, he's dirty. That's something that we are always being reminded of by the narrator. He's like, he's in the news, he's like, Richard Ramirez, a 25-year-old from California, also known as the Night Stalker who was also known as the Valley Intruder, is now killing people, Richard Ramirez. For me, it's like, for me, it reminds me of those, uh, those shows about how things work or how things are done. It's like, do you want to know how a school driver, it's done. School driver, it doesn't, it, it doesn't exist. Like, do you want to know how a chocolate bar it's done? Do you want to know how to use the screwdriver? I know how to. Aged 18, Richard Ramirez headed west to California. The Golden State would become his hunting ground. Five years later, in June 1984, he would claim the first murder victim of a 14-month killing spree. And we have finally the first victim, which after all the contemplation, after all the thoughts, he finally did it. He finally did it. And, and poor, eight, yeah. poor Jenny Vincao. She was brutally stabbed. And sexually assaulted this poor woman. This was so brutal that her head was almost decapitated. How can you get away with this? Maybe it was the times. At the time, there wasn't a lot of uh, ways to discover who did this. But I, nowadays, this wouldn't go by. I wrote this like, uh, first victim, weak, fragile and lonely. This was in his mind and he was like, the first one can be easy. I need something easy to begin. It's almost like you are starting a course. That he was. <laughs> he was really, really large. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. So six months after that, he was never caught. But he was arrested for a car theft. A car theft. And he spent 36 days in prison. Yeah, he had his, his first mugshot, which will be important in the future. This mugshot will be very important. Jonas, what do you think this 36 days um, in prison knowing what you know that happens after. Do you think that those days uh, had something to do with, with what came after? I don't think so. I think these 36 days were a place for him to think about what can I do next? What will I do next? What would I want to do next when I leave? Because I know it's only 36 days. It's like a month and six days, so it's not a long time. And he has free food there, so I think... Food, the showers... It just... I. In my opinion, he just became more cold. By the way, if you steal a car, you know that you spent a month in prison. Yeah, in America. It's good to know. Okay. In America. At the time. I don't know nowadays how it is. <laughs> but. So he was released in March 17th of 85, by the way. And after he is released... I wasn't born, by the way. I don't know are anything you, about this time. Oh, you weren't? No. I thought you were. 91, bitch. You are from the 80s. I'm not. Oh, I am? You are from the age. Oh, I am. No. Are you sure? You are 1990. <laughs> so we are in 1985. And after he is released, Ramirez attacks three women on the same night, killing two. Completely random and unpredictable. There wasn't a specific victim that he was looking for. One of the things about Ramirez, it's this unpredictable behavior. It's kind of scary for a serial Three killer. Victims, nothing had anything to do about anything. What is his strategy? He just enters these victims' houses. He catches yeah. you in your safest place, where it's you so are scary. more vulnerable. Were you ever in a situation where you had a burglar in your house? No, I had a lot of nightmares about 
that, but uh, never happened. Oh, thank I God. did. Thank God. I you, did. You did? Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. When I was five years old, me and my mom went to the supermarket, and when we um, arrived back, there was a bicycle in our gate. And when we right. entered our house, the jewelry um, drawer was open, and it felt like they saw us arriving and Fuck. left really fast, but they took some things. And we heard some uh, noises. noises from the uh, ground floor And when we arrived. So this was kind of scary. But then uh, my mother w <laughs> grabbed the knife and was, was, was like screaming, Where are you, motherfuckers? I'm going down and I have a knife. And <laughs> she went downstairs <laughs> and there was no one there. And the bicycles went away, by the way. And then she um, called the police and I was at... Uh, the police. The police. <laughs> and I was at home. And my mother said, don't open the door to anyone. And I did not. So then she was talking to the Mothers police. Mothers always tell that. Yeah, she talked to the police. She left me on the living room watching TV. And then when she uh, was then talking to the police, she tried to enter the house, but um, I didn't let her. <laughs> cause, you didn't let your mother in. Yeah, because she asked me to not open the door to anyone. Good behavior. So I, I didn't open. You did good, Jonas. I you did good, Jonas. So she, she called someone to broke into our house. With you inside. With me inside. You must be proud. And uh, basically the story is uh, the guy that wanted to broke into our house left the keys inside the car. So they had to broke into their car to broke into our house. And then my mother was so pissed and went to me and was like, why didn't you open the door? And I was like... <laughs> Because you told me not to. <laughs> uh, but they, ca they, they catch the guys. No, never. 11 days after... Um, the next victims. The next victims were found. Yeah. Which were Vincent Zanzara and, and his wife, Maxine. He's unpredictable. He chooses randomly people. But the main couples are... Yes, they are stage. older. Yeah. He gets inside the home. Yeah, he it's, killed... It's Vincent the only thing first. that it's predictable. Yeah, he killed Vincent first and tied Maxine asking for money. One of the things Ramirez would do would be he would restrain his victims. That's obviously got a physical impact. It means you can't move. It means you're not able to respond to an assailant. And obviously there's the psychological element of helplessness and powerlessness. He shoot her three times and did horrible things to her, like taking her eyes out. What the fuck? I, I don't know. What's the point? Why the eyes? I think this is a really power move. He wants to be in control of the situation. Yes, but we are getting too brutal in this podcast. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I want to know anymore, any more crimes. This is getting... Uh, yeah, last episode gonna, yeah. was where it was, and now, yeah. now we are again you know grouching what? eyes of someone. Come on. Do you know what he does to the uh, eyes? No. He puts the eyes on the jewelry box that he found at the house and take those. Will he make a necklace? Yeah, and you know what? The um, video that we saw, we also get an interview of their son. And it's really heartbreaking. And we can see on his face that this is something that it's... He can't go. He can't move past this. He can't. Between May and August of 85, he killed eight more people and then four. I don't understand this phrase, but this, this, this is what he, they told us. He had a lack of predictability on the victims. These crimes took place at night, but at the victim's home, the safest place of every single person. Ramirez just wants to kill. Every crime scene was different. No which is one was really safe. Hard. Yeah. No one was safe. That was the, the idea that the media was passing because it is what, it, what you said. Everybody was in terror. There was no modus operandi. What the hell is that? Modus operandi. They say MO. Don't you know? No. They are always talking about the MO. He has no, no MO. Modus operandi. It's Latin, bitch. Can you translate that? Yes. It's like, for example, when a killer leaves a mark, always the same mark in the body. Okay. That is his modus operandi. Oh, and he had no? He had no. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There was only this thing about getting inside the home. 
He never killed outside. In August 8th, he had killed 13 people and he tried five other attempts. The police didn't know it was the same person. And this dude had the his first name, I think he was really proud. It was the Valley Intruder. These names, I mean, you need some kind of creativity to have these names, but for me, these names are kind of cool, so why don't we just give him really deprecated names like Smelly Cleeler <laughs> or Smelly Cat, yeah, Smelly Cat, S <laughs> Smelly I Killer with a su superiority oh. issues or Smelly, Smelly, <laughs> or Smelly Mouth, man. Yeah. But in LA, he had killed 13 people. It was like every single week he would kill someone. The police could not connect the dots. Yeah. And then Ramirez does what? He moves to San Francisco in mid-August. Narrator here repeats a lot. And this is where I started to uh, know this, how this man talks. It's kind of predominant in this video. It's like Ramirez, Richard Ramirez, a night soccer, the 25 year old from Southern California, the Richard Ramirez guy, the valley intruder who killed these 30 women. This is where we meet my favorite character in this video, who? which is Fran Falcon. Uh, we were hearing in San Francisco at that time uh, about a valley intruder. The Valley Intruder was an individual that was breaking into homes in Southern California, uh, predominantly the Los Angeles area, killing the husband, attacking the wife, uh, ransacking the house, and burglarizing uh, uh, a lot of valuable property. By the way, the Falcon. The Falcon. He will be okay. the Falcon after this. And he starts by saying, so he's from the policy in San Francisco. <laughs> And it starts by saying, like, we have a, a, a killer in the streets and it's very hot and people cannot leave the doors open or the windows. So they are being, like, cooked inside their homes. It's like, yeah, but the important things, the important thing here is the heat. Would you leave the door open? No, are no, you no, serious? No, no. I would do a sauna. I... <laughs> so one thing, Jonas. You told me that some people survived. What yeah. happened to these people? In this video, we see like 13 people killed in five attempts. Where are these people? What happened to them? Why are they talking? Maybe they're scared. Wouldn't you be scared? Maybe he's yes, coming back to hunt us again. But you know what happens in the end. I know, but maybe they didn't know. So we are in August 18. And he finally killed. Stopped killing. Oh, okay. It was not that. <laughs> so we are in August 18th, and he finally killed outside of California. Let me tell in this, San Francisco. Let me tell this this part, please. Okay, okay. Please, 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 please. Go, go. Please. So, Fran Falcon, the Falcon, aka the Falcon, we just call it, we're called to the Eucalyptus Street next to the zoo. <laughs> And they, they, um, they found an atrocious crime scene. Yes, so the husband was shot. The wife was raped and shot. And she's at the, in the hospital now, but I believe she died. <laughs> Ramirez ate their food. Is that, that is very funny. <laughs> Ramirez, what the fuck? Just eat at home before you do your job. What the fuck? <laughs> he decided to write or draw satanic symbols on the fucking wall. You know what he did next? I know, but tell me. Yeah, he vomited their food. And then he masturbated on the carpet. <laughs> why, Ramirez, why in the carpet? That thing is so disgusting to get out. Never, why? you never masturbated in the carpet? Not in the carpet. Not in the carpet, not, not in the bathroom carpet? Me. No. Never. No. In your life, when you were a kid. No. Never. No in the carpet, no. That's so disgusting, what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so until now, you don't have any information that is uh, satanic or uh, that they had uh, some worship for the devil. This is the first crime that yes. has the satanic star. Yes. By the way, yes. he doesn't know how to do a star. 
I yes. think he has to do the satanic course again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting very dark. I, think, I don't care. I think Frank said... I don't care if you're going to motherfucking do a star and a satanic star, at least it has to be a star. The points has to touch the, si the circle. If you want, guys, we will put this at the notes in the podcast, but you will see that it is not a star. Jonas, it's like... He's denying me and he's not he's saying that we are not going to post the star, but I want everybody to see the star. So the narrator decides to say that the shocking, the shocking graffiti, like, it's not, I'm sorry, calm the fuck down, narrator. You are offending the art and graffiti community. That's think, not a graffiti. I think that the narrator is your favorite character in this video it, and mine is the Falcon. Yeah, the okay. Falcon for me is amazing. The Falcon is the the police from San Francisco, and he says everything with this this voice, like he masturbated in the carpet, he he ate their food and then vomit the food, he killed the wife. Can you imagine if we did a podcast like this, Would talking you, like this? I think our first episodes uh, were uh, like uh, this. Uh, 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 uh. So. Yes, we are not sleeping because we drink a lot of coffee, but the narrator and the falcon that are the persons that talk the most in this video are so, 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 so boring. So our next victims are Peter and Barba Pan. So he definitely killed Peter Pan. He fucking <laughs> killed Peter Pan, I can't believe it. Jonas, stop crying. He didn't kill THE Peter Pan. It's Peter another Pan. Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Frank and his partner realized that the victims were shot with a 22 revolver, which was also the weapon used by the Valley Intruder in LA. So the Falcon is making some big by the way, discoveries. Frank, by the way, Frank is Frank Falcon. Frank the Falcon. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, this is my favorite character. Yeah. And he. His name is De Falcon. I, I'm starting to, to watch a lot of uh, crime documentaries and I, and I have these questions. Why? Most of the times you have people talking about their experience and then in the um, recreation of the scene, you have bad actors. Oh, yeah, you do. The worst actors in the world. Like, oh my God. They open the cast like, we want the worst actor to do a police. Uh, oh police, my God. <laughs> a police character. After committing a murder outside the LA Valley region for the first time, the newspapers had renamed the killer the Night Stalker. All of a sudden, uh, the media blew this case up to be something very, very big, which it was. And now we had a link with Barbara and Peter Pan in San Francisco. So the murder count was going up every weekend. And people all over the state of California were very, very frightened. From Valley Intruder to the Night Stalker. They thought that maybe he was the same person. So they had a new break. Frank started to check. The Falcon! <laughs> Frank! The Falcon! Okay, sorry, let me restart this phrase. <laughs> the Falcon started <laughs> checking recent crimes on San Francisco. San Francisco. Checking recent crimes on the San Francisco area and found a burglary report which had all the hallmarks or the night stalker break in i'm freaking out because of what we are about to tell you because if this happened to me i dread i dream i dreamt a lot about this when i was younger but here we go what happened do you want me to tell them mm -hmm. so you do all of that and i have to tell them so richard ramirez the night soccer gets inside the house using the bathroom intending to steal some things by the way, he's using coke, um, we know this from the beginning, he's using marijuana, he doesn't know, he doesn't have where to sleep. I said marijuana, I know, yes. I'm <laughs> Portuguese, stop <laughs> laughing! <laughs> marijuana. And he thinks that no one's in the house. Yeah. But actually, 
there is someone. The owners were not at home, but their youngest niece was. Fortunately, she heard someone breaking through the bathroom and she ran downstairs and hid in a closet and was not found. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Can you imagine your heart like boom, 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 I've dreamed boom, about boom, this boom, before. Boom, boom. I've dreamed boom. about this before. And I think where I would, hit, uh, would hide a lot of the times. When I have nightmares about this, I always imagine like me holding the breath and like doing like, <gasps> and being found out. Yes. Where would you hide? In the closet, of course. I would hide Where everybody below would hide. my bed. Below the bed. Yeah, it's empty. But it's very predictable. It's not. Like the like the Because you are expecting things to be there. And you can watch everything. I don't think you can watch everything from behind. No, because I have like... You can see. No, I can't see from uh, below my bed. If you... Yes, you can. No, I can't. But you know, when how, you, how do I you say hide? drawers? No, how do I say? Yes, you have a drawer. I have a drawer b b below my bed. And do you fit in the drawer? Yes, I do. I believe I, not anymore. I did that before. You're not with that body now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> he basically stole a lot of jewelry that had the homeowner's security number in case he would be stolen. Take this, Ramirez, fuck you, bitch, you horrible man. <laughs> you stupid murderer. You always do the same thing. Thanks to the social security number found on the bracelet, detectives in both Mission Viejo and San Francisco were now hot on the trail of the night stalker. Frank Falzon had tracked down a potential informant in Lompoc. So he was found out. Found out um, yeah, 200, 290 miles away, the police got a match in California where he sold the jewelry and also got an informant. The police got an informant. But we were not done with the debts. Next week, by August 24, Richard Ramirez got into action again. I wrote The Weekly Murders of Richard Ramirez. I think this would be a good uh, name for the, this movie. A new stolen car and new victims. You hate the narrator. <laughs> yes. A young couple raped the woman, but Kill she survived. Them. He did not kill the woman and the woman who was in, in the hospital. And what he, does he say to the woman? He, sa he says like, you met the Night Stalker. You told fucking them, asshole. Yeah, told him you met the, ni the Night Stalker. You fucking asshole. I still want to know how these women survived. I think it I was in purpose because he liked the attention. This woman survives and gives the, the police the, a very good description of Ramirez's face. Okay, and we get a composite sketch. The first and only one. His eyes are the same on the composite sketch and on his photos. It's so and psycho. It really creeps me out. So you have the bracelet that was sold and you have the, um, the sketch. He's almost at, the, at that point that he doesn't want to be caught because he wants to continue killing. Of course. But he wants people to know that it is him. Yeah, in some way. Yeah. So, D Falcon, <laughs> my amazing D Falcon, <laughs> <laughs> reminds of questioning the people, um, the guy <laughs> that bought the bracelet. The informant, right? The informant. Yeah. He was, he's like, you want to fight the guy? You want to fight the guy? You want, to, you want some information? I'm not going to give you the information. You want to fight it, babe? Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. Fight me. <laughs> like, well, and then the Falcon, by seeing that this guy didn't want to talk and didn't want to tell him who sold him the bracelet, he says this, I felt my blood begin to boil. And I, I look at this man speaking the same monocordy thing over and over and I, and I start thinking, oh my God, the Falcon, it's about to evolve and <laughs> release yeah. its anger. But no, he describes the thing the same. So the Falcon punches the, the guy. The he dude. wants to. He's he hard. wants to. 
he threatens to, to punch the yeah, guy. And the informant is like, Oh my god, 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 Asshole. The oh fucking, God. the rumble, the Mission Impossible, the fucking, it's the best. It's the best. He reminds me of those little dogs that bark a lot and then when you are close to them, they stop. During this time, he also finds out a fingerprint on the stolen car and we are in August 30th and the mugshot was released from the previous crime. Do you guys remember? We finally have a uh, mugshot release on the media. They finally connected the dots between the Valley Intruder and now the Night Stalker. And Jonas, tell me if your picture is in everywhere, every TV, what would you do to run away? What do you mean? So if I was, if I was, a yes, a serial killer. Yes. And your mugshot is everywhere. What would you do? I would hide. I think if I had my mugshot out there, I would probably stop. Stop. I don't know. I'm not Wouldn't you catch a buzz? What? Wouldn't you catch a buzz? I hate the buzz. <laughs> but that's what he does the next morning. <laughs> Ramirez boarded a Greyhound to where? To Arizona. Yeah, and then LA, right? And then LA. So yeah, people recognize it him and they went after him and they caught him up when i start to lose hope on society sometimes i believe well maybe not everything is lost Ugh. the truth that is is that you see in the video that he is not well treated after this yeah <laughs> you see him in bandages but he's smiling when he sees a camera he smiles to the camera he's happy because he's he's son of the satan um, he doesn't have feelings. Yes. He's a monster. Yeah. We now have the Night Stalker in custody. Yes! yes! So finally the citizens of California could sleep at rest before. Ramirez is finally in custody. The police started to gather information and evidence to arrest this crazy guy. And of course Ramirez pled not guilty. Wow. Uh, it would it, be very original yeah. if he said, I'm guilty. I mean, uh, in the last episode, he said he was guilty. So he pled not guilty, but he had the nerve to show up in court with a star, a devil star. Yeah, his on his hands. Hand. Yeah, with a 666. 666 number. Because he was the son head. of the devil. Satan. During questioning, uh, they wanted to break him, but they forgot that he had no emotion. Like, he has no emotion. I mean, yeah, I was, I was not surprised. But during trial, he was convicted for the LA murders, which were 13, but there were more. But he was only convicted, convicted and there were only evidences to these LA murders in 24 of October of 1985. With, and also at the time, he had female admirers. What the fuck? He was spending this time at trial like a celebrity, wearing sunglasses. And in this video, you, we see that he's like the female um, attraction of the thing. Like it's, what the? What the fuck? Girls, please know what the hell? What the hell? He receives many letters from many females and one was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He received 70, 75. Yeah, he received 70... <laughs> 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 yeah, he received 75 letters from a woman. <clears throat> Like, what the fuck? What are you doing with your life? Ugh. So, no, uh, no I, need, I, need, I need a break here. The, the most handsome man in the world, Ugh. even if it was... He was smelly. Even if it was... He has a bad mouth. Kills 13 people and more. He's convicted. And you send him letters? 
75 letters. Oh, um, how sad are you? I mean, with how, 10? How, 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 how? And actually, he got married? Yeah, with this woman, Doreen, the 75 letter person. They got Dumb married. Bean. Dumb bean. Doreen. Dumb bean. Doreen Dumb bean? Dumb in? Dumb in. Because she's dumb? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, Ramirez was found guilty and was sentenced to death penalty in California. His last words, he said a lot, but the last phrase that I will not forget was, See you in Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> See you in Disneyland. See you in Disneyland. Fucking no! We are going to Disneyland really we soon want and to I want to see you there. there. So fuck you. Fuck you, Ramirez. Fuck you, Ramirez. So he got married and in 2013. What the fuck? How many we how many years were there? <laughs> I don't get this. So in 14 months, Ramirez is able to kill 13 people or more. And he is like what? 14 years in prison yeah. with a sentence that and nothing happens. Yeah, and you guess what guys? He fucking died before he could face the death penalty. How fucking convenient. He had lymphoma or lymphoma or how you guys say it. And he died with 53 years old and there was no confessions. Ah, oh, this guy. Oh my This is so frustrating. Man. Like, yes. Uh... But thank God technology advances. And there were more victims that had no evidence that linked to Ramirez. But later in the 2000s, a lot of these crimes were finally linked to the Night Stalker. There are crimes that weren't solved before. And with the advances of technology, there are finally answers to a lot of crimes. And thank God for technology. Technology! Technology! <laughs>